for the dark hours when you dare not close your eyes. No sleep. It's the No Sleep Podcast. No Sleep. Featuring stories from Reddit.com's No Sleep Forum. No Sleep. Join us as the sleepless hours tick past. Our final tale is entitled, There's Something Wrong, written by Joshua Giles and read by Wade Thorson. It might be the beer from all the partying, but I could swear there's something wrong outside. I know everyone left, but there's still a car outside. Not my car, that one's out there too. Someone else's car. That means that between my house door and their car door, they got lost somehow. There's definitely something wrong outside. I can hear it. It's, it's scraping against the house on the outside, scratching long, dull lines into the wood with mu- must be its long, dull claws. Like it's taunting me to come outside. I put my ear to the wall to hear it, and it stops scraping. God, I think I can hear it breathing. Tap, 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 tap. Just inches away from my head across nothing more than flimsy, decades-old wooden beams. Not scraping anymore. Tapping. (laughs) Can't do anything to get me out there. I wasn't planning on going to class tomorrow anyway. I'm sure it'll go away in the morning. Yes, there won't be anything wrong outside when the sun comes up, I'm sure. If I just stay calm in here, then it's at the window. I I I can see the condensation from its breath on the glass. There's nothing behind the glass. Oh God, I can't see it. I I just know it can see me though. It can see my neck. It can see my flesh. It sees something it wants. It's scratching the window, making Two long streaks down the glass. Slowly. So slow it seems like it'll be hours before it hits the sill. The sill. The the bottom of the window. The bottom of my unlocked window. I can practically feel its enthusiasm on my bounding, leaping journey across the living room toward it. Toward its undoubtedly hungry mouth. I almost trip on a beer bottle on the way, but I'm determined to get to that window before it manages to open it up. Oh God, if it opened that window, I don't want whatever happened to... Oh, I can't even think of that person's name right now, but I'm certain there's a freshly torn corpse out there somewhere. There just has to be. I hurriedly flip the window lock. It huffs a breath against the window at the same moment. A huff of disappointment. It sounded like a horse, or a bull, or something else even worse, and it left droplets of mucus on the glass. No more breath on the window. It's finding another way in. I can hear it trample the brush along the side of the house. It's going around to the back. What's at the back of the house? It has the upper hand. It knows this house. I've only been here a week. Just got here for college, a house my parents managed to get for me, way out at the edge of town. What's at the back of the house? What's not at the front or the sides of the house? The outdoor cellar entrance. That's the back of the house. Jesus, where's the indoor cellar entrance? In in, in a closet somewhere, I think, in, in, in my bedroom closet. Yeah, that's where it is. I just hope I can get there before it does. I don't lock that door. I don't lock the outside door either. I aim the flashlight at my closet door and see a hole into the blackness. But there's something wrong down there. I peer down into the hole, scanning with my flashlight when a sound pierces the cold silence that I'd grown so accustomed to. Hey man, what the hell? (sighs) A pair of people in the middle of what must be a drunken one night stand are in the cellar. At the other end of the room, the three of us hear a creak. Moonlight pours into the space as the outside door squeaks its way open. 
A horned shadow forms on the dusty ground of the cellar, and an enthusiastic grunt fills the space as I pull my head back up into my closet and slam shut the trap door. The young fornicators inside are shouting. They're confused. They don't know what's wrong, but now they're shouting in pain. That sound is so terrible. The sound of bones cracking and flesh tearing. The sound of people dying. I can't handle this. I pile as much as I can on top of the door before rushing back into the living room. I sit on the couch, huddled in fear, watching the windows. I want to turn on the light, but I don't even bother trying. I know that there's something wrong with the power now. This thing has cut the power line. It has to have cut the power line. A dull thud reports from one of the windows. My gaze snaps to it and I see a hand reaching up from below, smearing blood on the glass. I rush to it and peek outside the window, but this hand doesn't have a body. All it has is a few inches of an arm and a few more inches of bone at the end of that. Suddenly the hand retracts into the darkness, pulled away by the monster. Thud, a new hand. This time a female hand, and this time only with one finger. An index finger pointing up toward the roof. The, 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 it's on the roof. They come down the, the chimney. I push all the strength the beer can give me into the couch. It tears jagged lines into the floor along its path to cover the fireplace. But before anything gets into the room, I block the hole. I hear another huff, followed by a sist. Like... Like the sound of pouring water behind the couch in the fireplace. Then I see the dark outline spreading out on the floor in front of the seat. It oozes around the empty bottles and cups scattered on the floor. It mingles with the various liquors spilled over the course of the night. I can barely see in the dark, but I know what it is. I shine my flashlight to confirm my suspicion just as the chunks start to flow out. First, just a piece of meat, then an eye, some fingers, slowly spreading out on the living room floor. The heavier pieces dislodge cups from their position and start a cascade of deathly stinking sludge through the room. I can't take this. I'm done. The bathroom door pushes open easily and I grab whatever bottles I can find behind the mirror. Two or three I manage to open easily and I pour their contents into my hand, just as I hear it. The sound of the window. There's something wrong. Back in the living room, feet just at the edge of the, the disgusting layer covering the ground, I see the window open. The locks snap, apparently without effort. A huff. Footsteps across the wooden porch outside. The doorknob rattles, cracks, and the door swings inward. A huff. It's just been playing with me. More footsteps across the other side of the porch, the other window. The locks snap. The window pounds the wood at the top of its run. A huff. The filth on the floor is knocked out of the way by its feet. A huff. It's just been playing with me.